Hi there, this is Charles Kelly. Can you get rich as an employee or working for somebody else? You know, I see a lot of stuff written about this, um, you know, in books like Think and Grow Rich. You know, they, they talk about employees as if, you know, you're almost a loser if you work as an employee or running even a small business. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of rubbish written about this. And, you know, my answer might surprise you here. I'm Charles Kelly, author of the book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. I've written about many of the people who have become rich and how they got rich and how some people lost all their money as well. Um, but, you know, I read today that the highest paid chief executive of a FTSE 100, that's the FT100 index, uh, the stock market index in the UK, the highest paid company executive in that index of companies, the CEO of pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca, earned in 2020, do you know how much he earned? 15.45 million pounds, 15.45 million pounds. And that was part of his his um, drive to deliver, you know, tens of millions of the COVID vaccine all over the world. Um, to be fair, he has, he, he's been with the company since 2012 and he's he's turned the company, he's turned the business around. So a lot of his, his pay would be performance related rather than and a basic salary. I mean, you've got a basic salary of like 1.2 million a month. It's, it's an incredible amount of money. Uh, but most of that would have been, as as with most of the chief executives, a lot of it is is based on performance, driving up profits, driving up the share price. At the median, the average sort of FT100 CEO was actually paid £2.7 million in 2020, which is 86 times the average worker full-time in the UK in, in 2020. So the gap is widening, in fact. People at the top are earning more and more money, and at, at the bottom, they're, they're not getting the pay rises that the, the people at the top are getting. And this is according to the High Pay Centre Think Tank. I, I didn't even know there was a High Pay uh, Centre Think Tank, but there is. Now, the next one along the line was, uh, I don't know if you've ever gone in to get any credit or they said, we're going to do a search on you. Well, a lot of those searches would be done by a company called Experian. They're one of the biggest credit rating, credit reference agencies out there. And he was paid, this is Brian Cassin, uh, 10.3 million pounds. Uh, but the CEOs of the PLC, the publicly limited companies, the publicly quoted companies, are not actually the highest paid earners. Many private bosses earn more than that. And I mean, people I know, I'm, I'm sure Rob Moore uh, earns more than that. He's got you know, hundreds of properties and uh, 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 training companies and all sorts of businesses, uh, property management companies. He's, he's probably earning more than that. And, and many people I know are earning more than, than that, who are running their own private businesses, private companies. In fact, Denise Coates, who is the boss of the privately owned gambling giant uh, Bet365, you might have seen them on TV, Bet365, you know, get online, bet on this football match, all that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, to be fair, she uh, helped build the business up to what it is today, but she, was, she earned £421 million. Pounds. I, I guess that was part of her package, maybe dividends, I, I don't know how she was paid, but that, that's an incredible amount of money. I don't know how much tax she paid on that. Um, but, you know, and, and as I said, many of the, the bosses of larger companies that are, are not even quoted, so they don't necessarily have to even uh, uh, publicly list their, their salaries, would, would earn more than the £15 million earned by Pascal Soirard. So, Soirard, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, he's a French guy. Okay, uh, so I think there's a lot of, I mean, that's at the top end, right? But what about the, the, the employees at the bottom and the middle? Well, clearly, yeah, if you are an employee on the minimum wage and you never improved yourself, you never studied, you never got on, you never got promoted, then, yeah, clearly you would not become rich like that, right? But many employees do become rich, and I've met many of them in my days in, in, in financial services. I met many employees of, of government agencies uh, who had over the years built up wealth and become rich. And I, I, I guess there are, I can think of immediately four ways that you employees can become rich, okay? So you don't have to go out and grind away and start a business to become wealthy. Of course, it depends on what you mean by rich. This is, these are not billionaires or, you know, hundredaires or whatever, you know, they're not in that kind of league but they can certainly become very well off and, and what 
in many people would consider rich. I mean, if you're a millionaire, people would say that that is rich, certainly in, in many countries. And, you know, compared to uh, if you even if you're a dollar millionaire in America, you are very rich compared to people in the developing world. OK, so I think there's four ways that employees can become rich. One is performance related pay and bonuses. We see this all the time in the city. Many people on the left side of, of politics say we shouldn't pay these people bonuses, fat cat bosses and all that sort of thing. But bonuses are obviously paid as part of performance related pay. Um, now, this can get out of hand sometimes because sometimes people can be paid a bonus just to drive up the share price of a company. And they can do that by doing things like buying back their own shares to drive the price up and then collect a bonus. You know, that's clearly wrong. But if it's managed well, then certainly the the, the CEO of AstraZeneca has built up the business and turned the business around, stopped it getting taken over by Pfizer and, and has built a substantial company, which is still in British hands. So, so that, that's a good thing. And, and many uh, of, of these people, you know, I can think of the boss of, of Tesco's. I can't remember his name now. He's not there anymore. But he, he transformed Tesco's. He helped transform Tesco's into these small supermarkets in high streets to these to what it is today with these mega hypermarkets all over the country. He, tur he turned the company round. You know, the, the boss of uh, PC World, for instance, and, and uh, you know, th they have done amazing jobs and, and they deserve to be rewarded for that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. But, you know, so, so performance related pay is a lot of it. A lot of the big salaries you see are performance related. So they wouldn't get that salary if the, the business did badly. They wouldn't get that salary. Of course, CEOs of, of publicly quoted companies, you know, do get big salaries, even if the company is doing badly sometimes. And that, that, that again is wrong. That needs to be controlled. Now, the, the second way is through salary, not just talking about CEOs of companies, but, you know, many employees are on very, very good salaries. Many of the people I know that are very well off are employees. They work for, for banks, they work for the NHS, some of them, they work for governments, but they're paid very, very well. Uh, now, you might not think that a government employee can get paid, get paid very well, but believe me, there are jobs that people get paid very well in. And over the years, by, by, by earning these salaries, by living, at, you know, not living above their means, but putting money aside, uh, and they can become wealthy over time. In fact, often wealthier than, say, someone who's running their own business and struggling. OK, so salary is another way. And I know people who are on very good salaries and, you know, very nice salaries but pay indeed. I mean, even the, 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 the boss of many councils are on £100,000 a year or the HR executive of many councils, local authorities are on over £100,000 a year. Hospital trust bosses and more than the prime minister, for instance, you know, they can be on two, three hundred thousand pounds a year. Now, the third way then is pensions. I might have already touched on pensions there, but pensions is a way that people can build up substantial wealth, particularly if you're working for the government, because they have what's called a final salary pension scheme. And as they earn more over the years, their pensions are going to be related to, to their final few years of earnings. And, you know, if, if, um, if, if you have a, someone who's been paid in, in a government job £100,000, I would say at least another £20,000, £25,000 is also, on top of that, being put into their pension schemes. So I've met people that were mid, middle manager people in, in the NHS that had built up pensions that, OK, they, they can't get hold of that money in one lump, or they, they could if they transfer it out, but that would be crazy. But their pensions are worth millions of pounds because the amount they're getting as a pension... Uh, say, if you're getting, I don't know, if, if you're getting 20,000 a year as a pension, you need a lot of money in a pension fund to, to give you 20,000 a year guaranteed pension for life, going up at a certain rate, paid to a widow, all that sort of thing. You'd, you'd probably need a million pounds in there just to get that sort of pension. And some of these people are getting 30 and 40,000 a year in pensions. So, so a lot of government employees end up with a pension pot of, of a couple of million pounds just by, by working for, the, for those years. Now, people in the private sector could, could never build up that, that size of pension fund and, unless they were earning a lot of money and putting a lot of money aside. And certainly, you know, the average, your, your average self-employed plumber, he might be doing very well. He might be earning 100,000 a year. But I doubt if he would have a pension pot of a couple of million by the time he retires. So pensions is another way that employees of, of large companies, government organisations, 
uh, MPs, police, fire brigade, nurses, they build up substantial pensions over time if they stay in that job. And many people love doing that job. They love their work. Why should they go and start a business if they love what they're doing? And the fourth way then is share or stock options. You know, when I worked for a company, I worked for a large insurance company, I had, well, I had a, a non-contributory pension scheme. So had I stayed there, I'd be on a substantial pension right now. Secondly, I had share options and stock options. You could, you could buy shares at a, at a fixed price and then if you waited five years, presumably the price had gone up in that time, you could cash those shares in uh, and sell them at the price you bought them for five years ago tax-free. And, and many people have built up substantial wealth by, by getting those stock options, by putting some of their salary into share save type schemes, save as you earn, that sort of thing. And you know, I, I knew people working for Glaxo that had hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of shares and stock options in, in the company. So it's, it's unbelievable how much people can build up in wealth, real wealth, just through share and stock options offered by the company they work for. Now clearly, if you're working for a one-man band, they're not gonna give you a stock option, but many large companies do give you these stock options. And the, the reason they give them to you is to keep you there, is, is so that you stay with that company. They, they want to retain talent, and by giving you stock options, they used to give you staff mortgages, um, good sick pay arrangements, sometimes free health care, and all these sorts of things. Like in America, you've got to be with a company that's given you health care and health benefits. Um, and, and many of these companies will give you these things, which if you were working for yourself, would cost you quite a lot of money every month. So those are four ways, performance related pay and bonuses, salary, pensions, and stock options are four ways that uh, employees can become wealthy or rich, or depending on which what you call wealth and rich. So, so don't think that you must go and start a business to become wealthy. You can also have a, a sideline business while you're working for a company five days a week. Why do you have to waste all your time in the evenings and weekends? And you know, millions of small businesses, uh, business owners, freelance, self-employed workers earn less than a minimum wage when you take into account the amount of hours they're working. Now, I certainly found this when I was running the business, I was working 60, 70 hours a week. Now, I don't think I was earning the minimum wage, but you know, I was drawing a good salary, but if I'd actually broken it down into an hourly rate, maybe I would have been better off working as an employee. I don't know, I don't think so for my, for my case, but there are a lot of small businesses that don't earn very much money and, and struggle. Then they, if they get sick, they're not getting paid. If they have an injury, they're not getting paid. If there's a, a, a lockdown, they're not getting paid. They have to rely on, on government help and support. So, you know, and, and then they can have gaps in their, in their working life for whatever reason. Maybe the business that they're in becomes obsolete. What if you're running a shop selling, uh, I don't know, blockbuster type videos a few years ago? What if you're running a record store and that's, that's obsolete now? What if you're doing a trade that nobody needs anymore? What do you do then as a small business? So they're also vulnerable. And not every small business owner is actually making uh, big, the big bucks, you know, or if they make the big bucks, they might make it for a few years and then what, you know, and often they don't put enough aside into pensions to, to get them into retirement. Yeah. However, having said all of that, most of the self-made millionaires, uh, according to studies, are, are in fact small business owners and who've done well and worked hard and built up their businesses over many years. In, in the book, uh, the Secrets of the, the Millionaire Next Door, which was a, an academic type study, you know, they found that uh, the average millionaire that you might not know is next door to you is actually a, a business owner that's built their business up over 20, 30, 40 years and, you know, actually leads quite a, a normal lifestyle, sometimes a frugal lifestyle uh, and, and built up their wealth. They don't splash it about as, as you would think with a millionaire. So the average millionaire is not a sports star, is not a singer, it's not a pop star. The average millionaire is a, is a self-employed uh, or, or a small business owner. Now, business owner can also mean you're employing other people. It doesn't mean you're a one-man band. A business owner generally, uh, what, what the, the, the people who become millionaires generally use leverage. They have employees working for them, as I did as, as a business owner. I would never have made as much money as I did in a business trying to do everything myself. So... Millionaire uh, habits and, and millionaire secrets, um, 
have been studied and documented in academic studies by Harvard University, all sorts of things over the last hundred years. Best-selling books have been written about, you know, hundreds of best-selling books about the secrets of millionaires, the secrets of this, the seven stuff, you know, all these sorts of stuff. And, and perhaps the, the, the daddy of all these books was Think and Grow Rich and the one before that, The Science of Getting Rich, um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, of course, uh, were written almost a century ago. So th these are not massive secrets. We know what millionaires do. You can find out what millionaires do. And I published my own book. Yeah, money can buy you happiness. Yes, money can buy you happiness. That was about how people get rich, how people make it. Um, so th these are not big secrets out there. We know what they do. And, you know, it's it's the habits that they lead and, and that they, they, they live by and the people they become to become millionaires are not secrets. They are habits and traits and they, success leaves tracks. They leave a trail. So you can follow those tracks and... You know, all you have to do really is follow the tracks and follow the traits and follow the habits of self-made millionaires to become wealthy yourself and become financially free. It, it's really that simple. Um, and, and I hear this all the time. Uh, you know, so, sometimes people are trying to reinvent the wheel when all they have to do is follow what others do to, to, to make it. You don't have to invent some new product. You don't have to be the, the crackpot inventor in your garage trying to invent, you know, the next tool that becomes the, the next big winner you can follow other people you know you, you can find out what businesses are successful and follow into that 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 business uh, now if you'd like to know more about investing managing your money becoming wealthy becoming an investor maybe into property or you'd like to be financially free without working any harder whether you're an employee or whether you're you're uh, working for yourself then i'm going to put a link down to a free on-demand training video you can watch it anytime you like and if you watch that i'll give you a special free gift which will help you immediately transform your your finances just for attending the online training so do stick around for that and click on the link below so thanks for listening and have a have a, a great day stay safe and and think about how you might like to become wealthy uh, and you know make a list of what would you do if you become wealthy what what, what kind of lifestyle would you like if you could become wealthy write it down you know think about that um, and don't be frightened of having a go don't be frightened of trying most people never try to become wealthy that's why they never really get rich because they, they just think well I can't do this but you can you know you can do this so click on, on on the link for my free training and that could lead you on the first step this could be your first step to becoming wealthy even if right now you have nothing you're broke just watch the video and and take that first step thanks a lot and have a great day